Welcome to, to the, the beach. beach. I'm Miss Alyssa. And I'm Scarlett. And we are so glad that you could be here with us today. Guys, it is the last Sunday of September. We are already almost all the way through September. Can you guys even believe that? This year is flying by. I feel like September barely started and here we are already at the end of it looking towards October. Before we get to move forward into another month and into another series, we need to review our memory verse for this month, right? Scarlett, do you remember what it is? Yes. Do you want to recite it for us? Remember, it's from Proverbs 17, verse 17. A friend loves at all times. They are there to help when trouble comes. It happened, you guys. She memorized the memory verse. This, this actually happened. I really hope that you guys mm. did that at home, too. Let's all say it together just to remind ourselves, okay? Okay, a friend loves, loves at, at all times. times. They They're are there to help when trouble comes. That's it. If you guys remember that memory verse, it will help you to remember everything that we've learned this month, right? A friend loves at all times, even when it's hard, even when it's easy, even when it's really difficult, even when they don't feel like it. A friend loves at all times. They're there to help when trouble comes. So when your friend is having a bad day, it's not the time for you to just disappear into the background and not be there to be their friend, right? And if you're tired and you just feel like hanging out at home and doing nothing else, but your friend wants to spend time with you and work on your relationship together, maybe get that energy up and go out and have fun with them anyway. A friend loves at all times. They are there to help when trouble comes. That's amazing, you guys. Great job. I'm excited to see what next month's verse brings. So this month's theme has been block party and everyone's invited, right? We're really focusing on friendship. And I think that you guys have all become much better friends throughout this month, right? Friendship means using your words and actions to show others that you care. And this week, we're really gonna work on forgiveness. Forgiveness is important and friends forgive each other. And it's hard to do that sometimes. Sometimes it's, I mean, almost always it's hard to forgive, but a good friend does forgive and works really hard to maintain that friendship. So we're gonna focus on forgiveness today. And remember, you should treat others the way that you would like to be treated. So that's a really good rule to follow just in everything, but especially when you're dealing with your friends. So let's pray and get into this week's Bible story. It's about forgiveness and friendship and working on your friendship. Let's pray together. Dear Lord, thank you so much for bringing us all together today. Please be with us this morning and help us to focus and to clear our minds so that we can learn more about how you want us to be good friends to each other and how you want for us to forgive one another, even when it's hard. Be with us this morning and all mornings. In Jesus' name, amen. So this week's Bible story comes from John 21 and it's verses 1 through 19. But a little bit of backstory about this. This is happening, if you guys remember way back in April when we did our Easter story, in the story, there was mention of a guy, a friend of Jesus's named Peter, who, who was told that you're gonna, Jesus told him that three times people are gonna ask about me and three times you're gonna tell them that you don't know who I am. And Peter was like, there's no way that I'm gonna do that. You are so important to me. We are such good friends. There is no way that I would ever tell someone that I don't know you. But then sure enough, three times, People asked him if he was with Jesus, if he was a friend of Jesus, and three times he got scared and said, oh, no, 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 I don't know him. I don't know this Jesus guy. And then after he realized what he had done, he felt so sad because he had not been a good friend to Jesus. He had denied that he even knew who Jesus was. So that really broke his heart, and it was hard for him after that to feel okay about his relationship with Jesus because he felt like he had really let his friend down. So this week's story is going to talk a little bit about what happened after Jesus came back. He appears to his friends and they don't recognize him right away, but after a little while, they do know that it's Jesus and then great things happen. So let's get into the story and you'll see what happens. So I'm gonna be reading from the easy to read version, but I'll put the words along the screen so you can follow along at home. Let's get in it. Later, Jesus appeared again to his followers by Lake Galilee. This is how it happened. Some of the followers were together, Simon Peter, Thomas, called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the two sons of Zebedee, and two other followers. Simon Peter said, I am going out to fish. The other followers said, we will go with you. So all of them went out and got into the boat. They fished that night, but caught nothing. Early the next morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the followers did not know it was Jesus. 
Then he said to them, friends, have you caught any fish? They answered, no. He said, throw your net into the water on the right side of your boat. You will find some fish there. So they did this. They caught so many fish that they could not pull the net back into the boat. The follower Jesus loved very much said to Peter, that man is the Lord. When Peter heard him say it was the Lord, he wrapped his coat around himself. He had taken his clothes off to work. Then he jumped into the water. The other followers went to shore in the boat. They pulled the net full of fish. They were not far from shore, only about a hundred yards. When they stepped out of the boat and onto the shore, they saw a fire and hot coals. There were fish on the fire and some bread there too. Then Jesus said, bring some of that fish you caught. Simon Peter got into the boat and pulled the net to the shore. It was full of big fish, 153 of them. But even with that many fish, the net did not tear. Jesus said to them, come and eat. None of the followers would ask him, who are you? They knew he was the Lord. Jesus walked over to get the bread and gave it to them. He also gave them the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his followers after he was raised from death. When they finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these other men love me? Peter answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Then Jesus said to him, take care of my lambs. Again, Jesus said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Then Jesus said, take care of my sheep. A third time Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was sad because Jesus asked him three times, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, take care of my sheep. The truth is, when you were young, you tied your own belt and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will put out your hands and someone else will tie your belt. They will lead you where you don't want to go. Jesus said this to show how Peter would die to give glory to God. Then he said to Peter, follow me. This Bible story shows us that even after Peter messed up and hurt his friend Jesus, Jesus forgave him. Jesus took the first step and showed us that friends forgive one another. You've probably never needed to forgive someone in the same way that Jesus did, but there are times when our friends say or do something unkind or careless. I know that I've said things that I didn't actually mean and I have needed to be forgiven and I'm sure that you guys have too, right? You don't have to share, but raise your hand if you've ever had a friend hurt your feelings before. Okay, now raise your hands if you've hurt someone else's feelings, either by accident or when you were upset. I know I have, right? The best part of the story is not just that Jesus forgave Peter, but that Jesus forgives us too. Jesus also gives us the power we need to forgive our friends and to ask our friends to forgive us, even if it's hard to do that. Bad days and thoughtless words happen to everybody, but we can show how strong friendship is by remembering that friends forgive one another, right? It bothered Peter that he was not a good friend to Jesus. When your friend does something to hurt you, you can't actually erase what they did from your mind, right? It doesn't just disappear easily. But if you truly forgive them, you free yourself from having to always think about it and be angry about it. Forgiveness means you move on and show that friend that you trust them again, just like Jesus showed Peter that he trusted him again. Friends forgive one another. Whether in games or on the playground or in class, we can show that friends forgive one another when we give each other a second chance. But this also means that when our friends forgive us, we need to turn our behavior around to show them that we love them and we won't repeat our mistake. That's part of asking for forgiveness. Saying you're sorry means that you're gonna try your hardest to not do that again, right? You don't just say sorry and then just keep hurting the person's feelings over and over again. You try really hard to not do that again. And so you have to make sure that when you ask your friends for forgiveness, you're really meaning that you're sorry and that you're asking for forgiveness so that your behavior will then change. That's really important. Otherwise your friends can't trust you, right? If you've been saying words that hurt people, even if you don't mean it, you should stop and think about what you say before you say it. Even though your friends say it's okay, if they're upset, it's not okay. Show how much you value your friendships by how you act after friends forgive one another. So this week in your print at home packet, I've included this sheet. I don't know if you can see it very well, but it is an outline of a heart. On this piece of paper, it's just a heart. So what I would like for you to do at home is to decorate inside of the heart as best you can. But 
try really, really, really hard to stay inside of the lines so that, it's, so that it keeps looking really nice. And then at the end, after you've colored it all the way in, you can ask your parents for some help and see if they can cut out the heart for you. And that way you'll have a beautiful heart that you can display to remind you to forgive. It's not easy to forgive. Just like when you're making this heart craft, it's gonna be really difficult to stay inside of the lines sometimes. You need to concentrate and focus, just like you need to concentrate and focus on moving on when someone asks for their forgiveness. You need to be forgiving to yourself as well if you're doing a craft that takes a lot of concentration and you start to kind of go out of the lines. Don't get super mad and just crinkle it all up and throw it away and give up. Forgive yourself, concentrate, and move forward. You need to have self-control and stop doing things that hurt your friend, even if you don't mean to. And that's a good reminder to help us to remember that. But like we said before, Jesus can give us what we need to keep forgiving each other and to grow strong friendships. Please put your hearts after you've decorated them somewhere special where you can see them often to remind yourself that friends forgive each other. Plus hearts are just really pretty to have around, right? Also in this week's print at home packet, is an outline of this week's Bible story. There's a bunch of different pages that tells the outline of the Bible story. So you can color these in, you can shuffle them out of order and then ask your brothers and sisters or your parents or any other family members to help to put it in the right order to tell the story that we learned today. There's lots of fun stuff in this week's print at home packet. So if you haven't already, be sure to ask your parents if they can print it out for you. So guys, that's it for September. We learned so much about being a good friend, about how to make friends, about how to talk to people to become better friends, about forgiving. I think that we're really, really set up to go into October with some great friendships, right guys? So why don't we pray together and get ready to go out into the world this week and really work on forgiving others. And if we need to be forgiven, asking for that forgiveness and changing the way that we're acting, right? All right, let's pray and get to it. Dear God, thank you for forgiving us and not holding our mistakes against us. Thank you that you have shown us what we need to forgive each other. Please help us erase our friends' mistakes and ask them to forgive us as well. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, that's it. We will see you next week for October and a whole new theme for us to explore. Have an amazing week and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.